the bonds of friendship and family. It's the story of two men who met by chance, became pals, then discovered a much deeper connection. Reporter Steve Wiecek of CNN affiliate WFSB has the details. I couldn't have had a better father. And truthfully, I, I am Gary Clark, the glass man's son. For many people, the holidays are a time to spend with friends and family. And if you ask Gary Clark of Wilton, he'll tell you friends and family are sometimes one and the same. That's what he found three years ago when he discovered his best friend of 25 years, Stephen Barbin, was also his biological brother. I said, wait a minute. If you're going to tell me that Steve Barbin is really my brother biologically, who's been my best friend for over half my life, you'd be giving me the greatest gift in the world. The first words out of my mouth were, I knew it. They are just, they're so much alike. The story began when Clark was adopted as an infant, something his dad, Ben, and mom, Marge, never told him. Fast forward 30 years to the mid-1970s, and Gary met Stephen in a Norwalk, Connecticut bar, a mere chance meeting. It was a very strange bond in the sense that we felt like brothers pretty much from the beginning. Gary even served as Stephen's best man when he got married in 1988. But it wasn't until a fateful phone call from a DCF caseworker in 1999 that Gary learned about his true background and the biological bond. Incredulous. I mean, I, I, mean, I was stunned. They say truth is stranger than fiction, and Gary Clark has learned a lot about his family's truth, including the fact he has 12 brothers and sisters. It's a subject he now plans to write about in his true life book. What I've learned is that all families have issues. Nothing, nothing is as it seems. In case you're wondering, Gary says he has been in contact with most of his siblings. He's become quite close with six of them. In Hartford, Steve Wiecek for CNN. And here they are, Steve Barbin and Gary Clark. They join me now from Hartford, Connecticut. Hi, guys. Hi. Happy New Year, Kira. Happy Same New here, Year. Kira. I am so blown away by this story. It's absolutely amazing. All right, so you guys meet in a bar in 1975. Kind of set the scene for me, uh, if you will. Well, we were, we were out with a few different friends from each of a different group of that, but we kind of put the tables together, a few guys that were just having a good time with each other and uh, had a few steaks and that, and we, we kind of gelled as a group. And then what happened after that, over the, as the months went by, we'd get together and do it a few times again here and there. And then Gary and I started talking to each other more one-on-one -on -one and found a, a, you know, a mutual connection on things. And we became close uh, discussing many different topics and that. And it, that was the, the foundation for what was to come over the next you know, 25 years. Gary, did you kind of feel this sort of weird connection with Steve when you guys met or yeah no it was, it was pretty amazing Kira um, from from the first night we met and then we shared shared this nice evening uh, Steve and myself and two other friends uh, um, my circle one from my circle one from his yeah we, we became very very good friends very very quickly and it kind of developed from there and it was it, it always was kind of a unique bond did either one of you know that you were adopted? I think I heard in the piece, Steve, you knew you were adopted? Yes, I knew, I, I knew uh, from pretty much the beginning uh, that I was adopted. Uh, I had no other brothers and sisters. I was raised an only child. But yeah, I had full knowledge of that. So the parents that raised you, did, did you ever ask questions about your biological parents or possible brothers and sisters? Did they ever tell you anything? No, unbelievably or not, I mean, they told me I was adopted. I understood what the concept meant, and I really never had any great urge to find out anything more other than that because uh, they, we had such a good relationship, uh, my mom and my dad, that uh, just was never that inquisitive either way. Kira? Yes. I never really knew an adopted uh, person before, and when I met Stephen, one of the interesting points to the story is within the first year of our friendship, and he told me he was adopted, and he had a wonderful mom and dad, and his dad is deceased, and his mom, Jean, is, is really, trust me, very, very beautiful person. Um, I had asked him if he ever, you know, was curious about finding out where he had come from, and, and just what he said, he said, you know what, I got a great mom and dad and I'm glad I have them, and I, I, I have no interest in really knowing uh, my biology. He's always felt very comfortable. Now, Gary, what about your parents? Why didn't they tell you you were adopted? Well, um, <laughs> they certainly didn't tell me, 
and um, for, for almost 53 years. Uh, it, it, doing my research, and, and some of it's conjecture, but I think perhaps in the times that I was adopted, I, I, was, um, I was raised Jewish, and um, our biological parents were, were not Jewish, and perhaps, again, conjecture, but, but at, at, in those times, uh, both of my sets of my grandparents were, were, were Orthodox Jewish. And I think perhaps there may have been a little bit of a problem not coming biologically from a, from a Jewish woman. That might be one of the issues. It's one of my, my little theories I have. Wow. Well, Gary, so then you got this call from the State Department. What Were you thinking, okay, this is just impossible. <laughs> this is too weird. Gary. Oh, hi, Kira. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Live TV. I, can, I love it. Well, no, Live television. I can Wake also up, tell brother. you, you're, you're, yeah, you're still taken by it. I understand. It yeah, is pretty no, no. bizarre. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I hear myself say things that are really quite astounding, even now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Give me your question. So you got the call from the State Department. <laughs> right. What, what was your reaction? Well, uh, the lady basically within a few minutes of getting me, we, we had played phone tag for about 10 days, and when she got me, literally tomorrow is the third anniversary of the phone call, December 30th. Uh, she basically said within two minutes, Gary, uh, do you know that you're an adopted child? And basically my jaw, jaw dropped, and I said, uh, no, uh, you must have the wrong Gary Clark. And she absolutely, in another couple of minutes, convinced me. Um, you know, she obviously had the proof and the paperwork and the documentation. And uh, the story was true. There was no, you know, running away from it. And, you know, there, there were further twist to the tail as she unraveled it for me. Wow. So Steve, tell me how you and your brother are a lot alike. Obviously, you know, you're best friends, but tell me about some, some similarities. He's bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, we both have a very good sense of humor, and on top of that, we have a very good self-deprecating uh, self sense deprecating. of Self-deprecating. <laughs> um, you know, we both, we have tendencies to worry about things and uh, maybe We'll discuss and get a little deeper into topics of, of things that we find we like to discuss. Gary, Gary being an actor and me always being a fan, I've always enjoyed accompanying him on certain things, never in front of the camera, but enjoy watching what goes on behind it. Um, and just the way we think, we've always kind of felt that if we could be in a room together, we kind of know what each one may be thinking. Yeah. Now, in terms of differences, uh, my brother could be a little louder, a little more opinionated. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me, I'm a little more quiet with everything, um, and uh, you know, you know, you just things that you just find over the years that uh, you, you just you kind of relate to and know that you kind of complement. Uh, uh, there, there's, it's like a ball; it's come together. Some of the things that he has that I don't, and vice versa. We 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 we're like the yin and yang of each other sometimes. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and Gary says you have the same barber too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Mine gives a closer shave, though. <laughs> All right, so you guys, tell me about your brothers and your sisters. How, there, how many kids were in your family um, from the very, your biological parents? How, how many kids did your mom have? And how many brothers and sisters have you reunited with and been able to sort of become a family with, I guess? Who would you like to answer the question, Kara? Go ahead, Gary. Okay. Well, we, you know, we were, we were... I was number seven of 13 children. Stephen comes, you're number tw 12. 12. Stephen's number 12. And what we found out, you know, as we kind of delve further into the story, that, you know, our parents basically gave up nine of us. And uh, we went to various, you know, homes, different religions, you know, different last names. And as of today, there's, there's six of us who, who I, I really believe were real solid. We have, of course, Stephen and myself, uh, our brother Richard, our, our sister Mika, our sister Adrian. Um, all of us are in the, in pretty much in or around the greater Bridgeport area. And we have a lovely sister Joan who lives in Florida. And us, the six of us are, are real, real tight. One of the, one of the I, I guess one of the sad parts of the story is, as I started to really unravel this tale and I had this curiosity to find out where I came from something that Stephen as I said before kind of never did um, I bonded really well we, we all bonded together very very well but as I started to really work on this story two brothers who stayed within the biological unit their whole life and two sisters who were also adopted out as we were um, really pulled away from the rest of us and perhaps in, in a sense 
I was the catalyst that made them pull away. I think they thought I was going to tell some horrid, sordid tale. And uh, I, I will say to anybody who's seen anything we've done up to this point in time, I defy anybody to tell me that um, it's gone that way. We've kept it light, positive. There is a darkness to the story, but uh, I would only say that'll be in the book. Wow. Well, I, I do know um, your biological parents passed away, didn't even get to see or, or know about this reunion. But Steve, let me ask you, your mom, Jean, what does she think about all this? My mother is just, she thinks it's absolutely wonderful. She's a wonderful person. Yes. She's been a wonderful mother to me. She is very, you know, my mom is 81 years old. She's always been a progressive thinker. And she just thinks this is, she just thinks it's fabulous. And of course, to learn everything was just kind of shocking to her. But to find out that Gary, who she's known over the years, uh, is my brother, uh, was just something that blew her away. Uh, except that she's always loved Gary, but it was just something that she Absolutely. couldn't believe until weeks later when the, the proof actually rolled in. So do you ever fight like brothers? Do we ever what? Do you ever fight like brothers? No, never. Mm. But I, but no, no, Ver we verbally, verbally, we, we verbally do, and we gi we give and take like that and everything. Well, all we so. do, do we? No, we yeah. don't. But yeah. <laughs> I see a road act happening here. Yeah, Not absolutely. only a movie and a book. Hey, you guys, uh, Gary and Steve, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story. It's it's awesome. It's really neat. Kira, thanks a lot, and I'd just like to say hello to my mother, Marjorie, who lives in Atlanta, and thanks for giving me a good home. Oh, very nice. I'll have to look Marjorie up in Atlanta then. Absolutely, Kira. Happy New Year.